This is Telecom TV from the 5G World event in London and here are today's news headlines. 3GPP to deliver the first phase of release 15 by December. Nokia's CTO on the challenges of this accelerated process. But will European operators be ready for 5G by 2020? And what research is still required to deliver the 5G promise? The 3GPP Standards Group is on course to deliver the first drop of the eagerly anticipated Release 15 by the end of December. And as the chairman of the RAN Group explains, the release was split to accommodate the faster completion of non-standalone mode 5G. After the decisions in March um, that we made in the RAN plenary to accelerate certain parts of 5G, we are going to deliver 5G into two phases within Release 15. So there's going to be a so-called early drop um, that certain parts of the functionality we would complete already by December this year, uh, December 2017. Um, and that early drop is going to deliver a so-called non-standalone system that relies on LT and LT control plane to deliver the control plane functionality and then 5G would come in as a capacity boost in a dual connectivity kind configuration. So that system or that uh, the specifications enabling that system will be complete by December. So the full release of release 15 that is due to complete in June uh, 2018 is going to incorporate the standalone 5G system including the new core network with all the new functionality like slicing for example that really is a, a defining new piece of functionality coming with 5G and also on the radio side a full standalone radio um, node B, a base station, and all of the core, uh, control plane functionality that allows uh, 5G to operate in a fully standalone manner, in the, I wouldn't call it independently, but irrespectively of, of LT. So you do not need an LT uh, to operate 5G in a standalone system. The acceleration of this standards process may be welcomed by some of the more progressive operators, but this places increased strain on vendors to deliver product. Some, like Nokia, are up for the challenge. We see the emergence of these new use cases. We talk about uh, Internet of Things. We talk about autonomous driving. We see that there is a need for these use cases to come to fruition. And if they do come to fruition without the appropriate network, they will be subpar and they will leave a bad taste uh, in the society and consumers. So we must make sure that they actually have the right environment. This ensures that one network will be designed with these in mind, so these use cases can benefit from that network. At the same time, that network will have the right scale because of its application to many different use cases, extreme mobile band being among the chief, uh, so that they will have the necessary scale to be deployed which is important to get the costs down. So really when we talk about 5G and the acceleration, it stems from not our needs and our desires as technologies to see our products come to fruition, but ensuring that the market is not fragmented and ensuring that the new emerging use cases will get to masses and to the society at optimal cost levels. A welcomed pressure, but a pressure nonetheless. While the standardization process may be accelerating, a question remains whether operators will be able to deliver 5G services by 2020. There are concerns that in some regions, such as Europe, insufficient government and regulatory help is available. Government, local government and local authority, we have to really support uh, operators. Operators need to work with the vertical to understand their requirement and engagement with the 5G and manage to get the investment from them. Because otherwise, operator, as I said, operator is not willing to invest. Vertical, if all the vertical get the requirement, operator get the requirement from vertical and promise good SLA, then they can attract them to do investment. And government, are, of course, a United Kingdom government already invest on the try in Saudi University and other uh, test bed, but it's not enough. The only way we can have a successful deployment, forget about the equipment, forget about the core network, successful deployment is only if local authority work with operator and have a, some sort of agreement with operator to give the street furniture uh, asset to operator free in return for good SLA 
and good 5G network. And then we can have a fast deployment. Technology research is at the heart of all new commercial systems. Leading centres such as 5GIC in the UK bring together academia with industry. But although a lot of work has already been achieved for 5G, a tremendous amount of work still needs to be done. There has been a huge amount of work on enhanced mobile broadband aspects of the 5G. The real differentiator between 5G and previous generation system is ultra reliability, low latency and massive connectivity. And that area requires further research and further standardization before we assume that 5G is completely ready now. This is our third and final news report from 5G World 2017. From all the team here in London, thank you for watching and goodbye.